Uh, buenas tardes chicos, buenas tardes a todos. Eh, muchas gracias el día de hoy por ingresar también a esta actividad. Eh, bueno, mi nombre es Elisa Scaliti y soy la Leo Out de Sosemur. Um, entonces vamos a empezar con la actividad del día de hoy. Como verán, tenemos invitados que son eh, de Kurdistán, así que espero que ustedes presten mucha atención y sean muy participativos con ellos, ya que son nuestros huéspedes. Eh, entonces, primero algunas indicaciones. Eh, lo que tienen que hacer para que esta actividad sea considerada para puntaje de intercambio, como ya saben, es llenar su pretest, el posttest y apuntar el código que se va a dar durante la presentación para que lo coloquen en el posttest. Uh, también recordarles que durante la presentación tener el micrófono apagado eh, para que no pueda eh, interrumpir a los ponentes. Si tienen alguna pregunta pueden levantar su mano o pueden dejarla en el chat para que los ponentes las puedan contestar eh, ya sea durante la presentación o al final. Eh, y bueno, creo que eso es todo. Entonces espero de todo corazón que les guste la presentación y nada, entonces vamos a empezar. Eh, los ponentes del día de hoy son, ambos son leos. Eh, la primera es Tía, que es de cuarto año de mmm, medicina, y el, el otro es Bayar, que es del tercer año. Sí, es un poco difícil para mí pronunciar las AL, así que solamente voy a decir los nombres. Sí, así que ahora los voy a, a presentar en inglés para poder empezar con la presentación. So, good, good afternoon and good evening, everyone. Uh, as I said before, my name is Elisa Scaliti and I'm the Leo of the LC Sosemurp here in EFMSA Peru. We are very happy to have you here with us and to present your uh, PPT about your country. So today we are going to have like um, talking and Dia and Bayar. Dia is the Leo of Sulaimani LC and Bayar is of the Leo, the Leo of Howler LC. And uh, Dia is in the fourth year of medical school and Howler in third year. So thank you so much and you can start. <laughs> Lisa, thank you for having us. Uh, hey guys, I'm Dia. I'm a local exchange officer, as Elisa said, from uh, Suleimani LC, IFMSA Kurdistan and Today, I'm going to be presenting Yes and No, the Kurdistan version. And I would like to share the screen. Um, okay. There we go. Okay. Um, so the flag on um, the lower left is the flag of Kurdistan. And let's start. Um, so Kurdistan is located in northern Iraq and uh, Iraq is in Asia or like the Middle East. And the Kurdistan region of Iraq is an autonomous region. It has its own government and it comprises three cities. Uh, the capital is Erbil or locally known as Holer. That's where Bad is from. Uh, and then there's uh, Suleimani or Suleimania. And then there's Tohok. And in the picture, uh, that's a town of Amadia, and we'll talk more about it later. It's really interesting. Okay. Oh, and uh, Hauler or Erbil, the capital, is also known as the Spider City, uh, as it has uh, a citadel in the middle of the city, and then it has rings of roads surrounding it and that makes it looks like it looked like a spider web and the currency that's used in iraq is iraqi dinar it is in, the currency used in kurdistan is iraqi dinar the same as the rest of iraq uh, and kurdistan is a multi-ethnic region so uh multiple languages are spoken but the majority of the population in kurdistan are kurdish So the main language spoken is Kurdish, but Arabic, Turkish, uh, English, and Assyrian are spoken too. 
Uh, Kurdish is an Indo-Iranian language, so it probably sounds very unfamiliar to Peruvian ears. Uh, but here are a couple of uh, useful phrases that I'll pronounce. Um, slow is the Kurdish word for hi. So when you meet someone, you're like slow. And chonit is the Kurdish phrase for how are you. And swas is thank you. Banit bash is good morning. And bahoshi is cheers. Um, Kurdistan is a pretty tolerant um, region compared to the surrounding countries and people from different religions live peacefully together. Uh, the majority of the population are Muslims, but there are also Christian and Yazidi minorities. Um, Kurdistan is home to many historical sites and that includes the citadel of Erbil, and the earliest evidence of occupation of the citadel dates back to uh, 5,000 years before Christ, so it's pretty old. And then um, on the left below, there is a picture of Amedi, which is a city that's built on a high hill. And that was built about 25th century uh, BC. And it was a city in uh, ancient Assyria. And the place was really strategic for back then because you know they used to fight and um, fight against um, occupiers and stuff. And then on the left above, there is uh, Lalish, which is a mountain valley, and it's uh, basically where Yazidis uh, go and pray and have their temples. It's really interesting. Uh, and we have our own Kurdish clothes, and this is what they look like. And on the right, there is me in traditional Kurdish clothes. And on the left are just some dudes I found on Google. But yeah, this is what it looks like. Uh, and we have Noros, which is the Kurdish New Year. Uh, and basically during this uh, day, which is the 21st of March, uh, we dress in uh, Kurdish clothes and then we go outdoors and we start a bonfire and then we sing and dance. Uh, and as you see in the picture, uh, people have like torches lit and as they're climbing the mountain and that has actually a pretty interesting uh, background. The thing comes from a legend that says back then there was a really tyrant king uh, and he had serpents on his shoulders and he fed on the blood of young men. So a really brave blacksmith once said that I'm going to destroy this king. And then he went and slayed the king. And as a sign of his triumph, he lit up a torch on top of a mountain to uh, signal his victory. And from that day on, that's how we celebrate the victory against evil. And basically that's when our um, new year is. Uh, and these pictures are uh, pictures of uh, people dancing in Kurdish clothes. And then on uh, the right below, there's a bonfire, uh, which we dance around usually. It's not as weird as it sounds, but we do dance around a fire. <laughs> and then, yeah, basically it's that. Oh, and uh, we have a video. It's called Halparke, by the way. Yeah, it, it's a Kurdish dance and it's called Halparke. And I'm going to show you um, this video. It's really loud. <laughs>
well, I guess that was enough. And um, it's a really fun dance, and we danced in weddings and nodos and um, New Year's, and basically we find every occasion an opportunity to actually we dance whenever we find a chance to yeah. like yeah we do whatever we go basically uh, so now um then now bad will proceed okay. Uh, okay uh hi guys so uh, my name is bad bad Havkar. Uh, i'm the local exchange officer for a bill and i'll proceed so we have greetings. Come greetings as uh, for for the first time when you meet someone. Well, uh, like obviously you shake hands, uh, or uh, during times like this, uh, social distancing like COVID, you just you can just like wave, and for relatives or close friends, uh, they kiss each other on the cheeks two times, like right and left, right and left. Uh, yeah. So next slide. Uh, so we have a nonverbal language, uh, some, uh, for example, like uh, putting the sole of your foot towards someone is considered disrespectful. And uh, most of the doctors or teachers in the university uh, find it disrespectful to cross your legs in front of them, and they hate it. Uh, also, uh, putting your ha right hand on their, your heart is uh, a sign of gra gratitude and thankful and like it's basically a positive vibe and uh, also putting your hand on your head it's expressing gratitude and thanking someone like something like that uh yeah next slide oh, sorry <laughs> okay yeah uh common concerns so we have dress code alcohol and safety for dress code uh, most of the people here uh, dress modest, but uh, it's okay if you don't want to dress modest. I mean, you can dress uh, however you like. And we're trying to evolve, uh, evolve and uh, accept our surroundings. Uh, so unless you don't uh, go out naked, you're going to be fine. And for alcohol, uh, it's also can not like publicly. Uh, you shouldn't like drink in the streets and stuff stuff like that but it's not like uh it's permitted yeah you can do it according like there if are you're bars and it's served and sorry it's served yeah, at every, basically every restaurant not every restaurant but you can find well, find it yeah. <laughs> it's not it's not so hard to find it you can do it and you can do it responsibly you can but you cannot like drive drunk drunk drive or show up uh, drunk to work just like uh in every other country uh, and uh, for safety, Erbil, is Erbil, I'm talking about Erbil, uh, it's one of the safest, safest city in the world. And Kurdistan is really safe compared to its uh, surroundings. I mean, uh, for example, like in Iraq, there are a lot of fights and stuff like that, but Kurdistan is really safe compared to its surroundings. Next slide. Yeah, and traditional food, we have uh, yaprak, which is our most, most, most famous food. Personally, I don't like it. So it's basically stuffed uh, rice and meat in vegetables uh, with a lot of uh, vegetables, rice and meat. That's basically it. But it's, it's nice. People love it. I don't. Uh, and we have biryani. It's rice with uh, vegetables. And uh, yeah, we also have kebab, which is a famous food. It's basically ground meat put on a skewer. Yeah, and uh, then uh, barbecued, basically. Uh, yeah, basically that's our food. And that thing is called, uh, I think, zurobi, something like that. Uh, yeah. It, we, it, we can sometimes it's like we put, fried bread yeah fried bread sometimes we put we put meat in it and sometimes we put uh cheese just like in the photo uh, okay. yeah and uh, we, there is also something weird so when fruit is served it's time for you to leave so when you it's uh it's common to get invited in a kurdish household to for a uh, lunch dinner and uh, like it's really common for you to get invited to lunch 
And there is a common habit that uh, when the owner of the house serves you fruit, it means it's time for you to leave. So they serve you fruit at like, like the last part, uh, but you also get served tea. That's a must. You have to drink tea. You cannot like reject it. Uh, yeah, that's it. Next. <laughs> Fun fact about Kurdistan. So Kurds are one of the most hospitable people you will ever meet. Just like I said, it's really common uh, for you to get uh, invited to lunch. And you can also search that on YouTube. There are a lot of foreigners visiting Kurdistan and they literally get free food as they walk in the like uh, bazaar, the market. Yeah. yeah, the market and stuff. Uh, we experience all the four seasons fully, which is really, really great. The summer is really hot and winter is really cold and uh, spring is amazing. And we also have a fully experienced uh, fall. Yeah, and if you want to attend, we have all the sun that you need. Uh, and Kurdistan is a very mountainous region. And as you'd expect, it's a great destination for hiking and camping. Uh, so next slide. Yeah, uh, this, these pictures that you see belong to a girl named Zeno. Her Instagram is uh, written oh, on the upper left. You can check that out. She's a really great hiker and a photographer. And basically, Kurdistan is a great place for you to hike and uh, go with friends to have a great picnic and basically to have a great time. Uh, yeah. Um, and and I'm, yeah. Go ahead. I'm going to um, finish this with uh, the exchange conditions in Kurdistan. Um, the required language for you uh, to be able to apply, you would have to speak, speak some English because medicine is um, taught in English here. And Peruvian citizens will need a visa if they decide to come here. And immunization requirements, you would need TB, diphtheria, polio, tetanus, and hepatitis B. Here are just some uh, general points. I mean, we could send you the link later yeah. to see in full details. And required level of studies, uh, only students that have started their clinical years are eligible to apply. Because when you come here, you would be in the hospital and that's where you're gonna have the classes, their clinical classes. And the standard documents that you're gonna need uh, are passport copy, photo, proof of enrollment in a medical university. A vaccination card, scope determined conditions, and language certificates. And that'll be it. So do you have questions? Uh, thank you. Any questions? Thank you thank very you. much. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, I have some question here of uh, here we that the participants sent to me like in private. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe uh, a question was why ah okay why in your flag there is a sun in the middle? Mm -hmm. What what is the meaning? Are you gonna answer that or should I go? Uh yeah you go actually it's in the tip of my tongue, just can express it. Okay, so yeah. that sun, uh, I'm not sure if you have no noticed it, but let's go back to it. It has 21 arrows. Yeah, it has yeah. 21 rays. And basically um, when I talked about Nodos, then uh, Kurdish New Year, it's on the 21st of March. So there goes a 21 rays and it basically symbolizes the Kurdish New Year, which is Nodos. And it has the 21 um, rays to represent the 21st of March, which is our um, new year. Yeah, and also the three colors of our flag, the red one is uh, the symbol of uh, uh, the red one is the symbol of what? Martyr. Oh, martyr. Of yeah, martyr. Uh, our martyrs and the white one is the symbol of peace. And the green one is the symbol of our beautiful nature that we have. Thank you. Uh, another question is, uh, how much money do you need if you want to travel to Kurdistan? 
Well, that would depend on the duration of stay, but for the fourth week, for the four weeks, um, Lenja, can you help out? <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm the Neil in Ova from Masai Kurdistan. Um, nice to see you all. Well, basically, if you guys are interested in coming over to Kurdistan, and uh, depends on which city you're going to stay, but usually uh, if you stay with a host family, I would say your expenses would be much less than if you would stay by your own, because if you stay with a host family, food is going to be guaranteed 100% because most of our Kurdish families, they are very, very um, generous and whatever they have in the house, whatever food, you're gonna get all of them, even if it just says one meal, but you, you, you might as well get all three meals per day. Uh, but usually things here are not so expensive, like our fancy restaurants, um, like people, things here are not so expensive like it depends on where you go some places are very cheap some places are very expensive but usually um things here are very affordable and so like i don't know it only it really depends on you but i would say at least just to be on the safe side for the whole month um just for spending just for spending just for spending like regardless of the plane tickets and transportation maybe uh, one like $500 to $1,000. It depends on you, like how much you go out, but maybe just to be on the safe side, bring like $1,000 with you just for spending. Like I would recommend that if you buy stuff and stuff like that. Um, Basically we have cheap if you want cheap and we have moderate if you want moderate and we have expensive. We have all the kind that you need that you, and you want. Okay, which other questions should we answer? Yeah. Thank you. There are some questions here uh, in the chat. First one is, okay, is there a special day to celebrate Medical Day or Doctor's Day? Is there? Is you guys there? have that in your country? We have, we have like the five of, why, which month, Edita? October or September is the day. October is the day of medical students, right? Okay. And also there is a day of, of the medicine here in Peru because we have, we have like uh, a lot of years ago, there were um, a doctor who was Carrion who discovered uh, a disease like La Verruga Peruana. It was the same of the, uh, uh, I don't know how to explain this, <laughs> Elisa. Uh, yes, well, we have um, a medical, well, um, the medicine day here in Peru that it's called, well, it was in October the 5th. And it's because uh, one doctor of us inoculate him um, a disease to research about it because uh, many, well, many people in here were dying for uh, this disease and they didn't know what, uh, what to do. So he did it, he inoculate, inoculated in his, in his arm, I think, and he died uh, researching about this disease. And that is why, uh, because he died this day, uh, it's, um, we commemorated as the medicine day and uh, the student of medicine day too. Okay, that's nice. Right. And you don't that's a have... very nice story, actually, very heroic. <laughs> but I don't think we have um, such a day here. We get celebrated every day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, like patients are always super, super thankful and they're super nice. They bring us presents or like food and, you know, call us just to catch up. It really depends on your patient and stuff. But yeah, people here, they love, they love our doctors. Other questions? Yes. And uh, here, uh, another question is, is there a special day? Oh, no, sorry. Is there topics that are not allowed to talk in 
conversation in public or with relative or friends? Uh, so that question really depends on your type of family. For example, there are conser conservative families and religious families where they, they, don't, they don't talk about taboo topics, but then you have open-minded families and the ones who, I don't know, everything for them is normal. So like, like every other country in the world, I would say. Otherwise, no, not, not something very specific. You know, as long as it's not something that's, how do you say, unpolite. Or expensive. Or, or like private, you know, you know, stuff like that, normal. It depends on the mindset of the family that you, uh, that you stay with, basically. Thank you. Uh, another question is, how is the situation about COVID-19? Great, everywhere is open, you know. <laughs> It's actually, it's actually getting better. I mean, yesterday there were only four cases in Erbil and 100, uh, actually 100, I think 10 uh, people recovered. So I guess it's getting better and all of the places are open, uh, but you still need to uh, have a sanitizer and wear a mask just in case. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, Annie is asking, what are the most common disease found in your hospital? Something like epide epi epidemiology, sorry. Yeah. For now, uh, it's COVID. <laughs> right now it's COVID, yeah, 100%. But I would say hypertension and diabetes. That's very common here in our, cult in our um, country because here we, we have such a foodie culture, like we love food. So you, you wouldn't be surprised if you see a lot of um, patients with hypertension and diabetes who are uncontrolled because they don't, for example, if they, have if they have diabetes, they don't take control of their diet or if they have hypertension, they don't control their uh, lipids, you know, because we have a very fat, we have our fatty foods, we have our sweets, we just love food, you know, like we're, we could be having breakfast and thinking about dinner. That's like, that's our culture. Like everyone here loves food, but he, and it really depends on some areas. Some areas you have like infectious diseases, like GIT infectious diseases, other areas, but usually you would see yeah, that'd be yeah, hypertension. Have, I would say so too. Thank you. And another question is, what places do you recommend us to visit in your country? And which food do you recommend to us to try in our trip in Kurdistan? We have a lot of places and that really depends on which city you're gonna come, you're gonna be coming to and which type of scenery you want. For example, we have our nature, we have our nightlife, we have our street life, we have our modern life, or, or we have our like antique life. So there's a lot of places and we have a lot of um, hiking places for nature. And we just, we love going on picnics. So what we do during the springtime when it, the weather is really nice here, we just, take a lot of food and a lot of games and dress in nice clothes or in Kurdish clothes. And we just go to like areas like um, green areas uh, by the mountains or like just on the road, you know, between the cities when you, you go by car and like, you know, some places are 20 minutes away, some places are an hour away, it depends on which region you are. And you just find a random place on the ground or like in the park or something and you just you just like lay out a whole mat and you know stay there for the day and that's like a Kurdish picnic and we do that usually you know during the springtime especially during uh, Noros our Kurdish new year you would find a lot of families like basically every Kurdish family they would just park all over the like all over the <coughs> um, the I don't know what you call it Oceanani Seyran Chipel and the Easy. Picnic places? Yeah. Sorry, that's a bit of Kurdish. I just wanted to ask in Kurdish. I don't know what I don't know what we call it. It's, it's like any any place you see that you can sit 
and they, you know there's a tree there's like grass Recently, and like the top, they're like they're like 10 meters between each family so like it gets very crowded because everyone's out like uh, and a lot of people here they have private property so like they have private um gardens you could either go there or you could go to the public places you know where it's for the public anyone can sit you know and picnic there like that's nice and you know you gain a, you you do gain a weight around that area <laughs> around that time thank you uh, another question uh, in your country weddings are big events you celebrate that in one day or more and there are some traditions about weddings well weddings are a huge thing for one they they always ask you so when are you getting married whether you're a boy or a girl here we we don't like to have um how do you say, open uh, relationships, you know, we don't say, uh, this is my boyfriend or this is my girlfriend. Usually you say, this is my fiance or, or, or this is my husband or wife, you know, we, it, we, we, everyone has relationships here, but that's not something we say out loud, you know, that's something private, you know, you, you, you don't want others to know about that unless, unless you're getting married. So, you know, because they're, they're very uh, protective about reputation and about uh, family name. We do have that sort of culture. But again, it depends on how conservative conservative your family is. So weddings are a huge thing. Um, you could like plan, we have like, I wouldn't say, so the, the real wedding takes one day, but we have preparations for the big day. For example, you have your, um, we have this thing uh, where the father of the groom, you know, or, or no, it's actually, I don't know, some, some people it's like, the, fa the head of the family, basically, either the father and the mother or like any, or like the uncle or like the aunt. It's like a few people, you know, from a very close family. For example, they would gather and go to the uh, bride's house and they would ask the bride's family, either her mom or her father, whoever is um, the head of the family, or it could, like, for example, it could be men going or it could be women going usually uh, or it's not um, so that <clears throat> and then they ask the bride's family for their daughter's hand in marriage they say this is my this is our son we've come here today we are visiting you, your house to ask your lovely daughter's hand in marriage and the the bride's family knows about this you know they they everyone's in on it you know but it's just like a cu custom like a formality to get it out and so like during that day um they get how do you say engaged but not as in the like civic rule not like legally they get engaged culturally or, um or by religiously because sometimes they have the uh, like the a muslim priest or it depends on if you're a christian or if you're muslim if you're muslim they have the mala um the malas there in the house and they have like a small ceremony where they're religiously um engaged and then they have a and then the day next they have an engaged they have either that day or another day they have an engagement party and then uh they have um something called henna day that's where just the bride uh, it's just a party for the bride and her friends where she gets presents and there's this thing we have henna on the hands. I don't know really. Um, and and then you have the big day, the the wedding day. I don't know. Do you, do you guys have any other? <laughs> uh, you covered it all actually. <laughs> I'm good, but like the wedding is big, and we usually dance a lot and eat a lot. Yeah. <laughs> That's just how we yeah. celebrate. We dance and we eat. The, we the haven't group. had a wedding in like. Forever though, because of Corona, I miss weddings. Dancing, and, like there's yeah. a wedding every week. You don't know like someone's getting married. Just like, like we have like a wedding season, especially during the spring and summer, because that's where that's when the weather's nice for their honeymoon. So like you know it's wedding season when you get invited week after week for like a relative or a friend's wedding. Yeah, and also in the wedding, the basically the groom and the bride they sit next to each other and everybody else is dancing and having fun and they're just like uh they're sitting 
Yeah, that's a thing. Can you guys hear me? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, what other questions? Yes. Um, here, Mariale is how is the process to enter to medical school or do your specialty? Okay. Lunch is gone, I guess. Uh, okay, yeah. so I'm going to answer. I'm back, I'm back. Sorry, I do not have problems. Yeah, but you guys answered. Okay. So the process basically is um, when on your uh, final year of high school, you take a college entrance exam. And based on your scores, you get accepted to the colleges you want. So if you get a high score, um, you could go to any college you want. And people usually want to go to um, medical school. So it depends uh, so solely on your on the score you get on the college entrance exam. And, and specialty is after you graduate the after the six years of medical school, and then you do three years of residency, right? And, uh, it's three years of med of residency. It's, and then it's three years. Three years, and then what do you do? And then you apply for a board according to your scores in university. Uh, and then either you get accepted or not, that's it. You can also apply for a board abroad. Uh, in our case, we can do it in Baghdad, Iraq, or uh, other, other countries like uh, Arabian countries or Europe or UK or yeah. Thank you. And uh, I think it's the last question. Or I don't know, maybe chicos, si tienen más preguntas, pueden escribirlas. No hay problema, podemos seguir con la ronda. So, is, can you explain us more about how can I pronounce new neuros? Yeah, that was right. Yeah. Yeah. How, how are the data established? What? I think is why the new year is the 2021st. Mm -hmm. Is it? Yes, why? So, because so, I. Mm -hmm. Sorry, go. I think yeah. that she refers that it's why is your new year on March 20, 21st? Uh, so basically, the, the, the blacksmith who killed the tyrant, I think he killed, it, he killed him on that day. And he he uh, let uh, light a uh, fire on top of a mountain so that people know. Uh, and that all happened on the twenty first of March, which is also the first day of spring. Which is also the first day of spring, which is why we have twenty one arrows on our sun. Thank you. Uh, uh, I have another question. Is um, in your country, are there some topics that are um, like taboos? Uh, I think Lanja has answered that, that question. Uh, there are not specific topics, but there are some like it, according to the family, according to the like the the people you're you're talking to. I mean, unless uh, it's not uh, disrespectful or private or. Uh, Things that like doesn't concern you, uh, it's fine. Everything is else is fine. I mean, every uh, for the have... older generations uh, here, uh, they don't show a lot of affection in, in public. So, like, if you walk on the street, you'll see couples holding hands, but not necessarily um, kissing or, or or like stuff or like or too much PDA, you know. You would see hugging and holding hands is fine, but anything more than that, no. It's uh, it's usually done privately, except on the wedding day. <laughs> you know, the wedding day, everything's fine. Um, other taboos. Um, I don't know, like just like act normal, like in like in every other country. Every country has their own taboos, you know, and just. Don't be disrespectful. Don't curse at anyone. Um, be nice. <laughs> You're gonna be fine. Trust yeah. Me. 
it's like I, here everyone is super nice so everyone is super helpful um, you wouldn't have any trouble any other questions thank you i think that mm, there are here more. people love foreigners uh, we get so hospitable with foreigners because we get so proud of our country and we just want to show it off. So we always want to give the best impression to foreigners because um, they also enjoy it very much. And yeah, we, we're just a very hospital country, I would say. Uh, there are also vlogs on YouTube uh, of foreigners visiting Kurdistan, like I said earlier. Uh, you can check that out. Uh, you will get your first impression and it's, it's a good one. Thank you. Ah, uh, another question is, is usually to see in your country people from Latin America? Uh, Latin America. I have person. personally met person. uh, from people from Mexico. Uh, or and from we had an exchange student from Brazil two years ago before Corona time. Um, uh, uh, Linda, we had uh, the Brazilian teachers back in high school, remember? Yeah, uh, they were they were Mexican, no? Yeah, I thought they were Brazilians. No, they were Mexican. They were from Mexico. It's still a Latin America, I guess. I think, yeah, they were from is it Mexico, Latin America, yeah. Are you right on this? <laughs> Sorry if we're not. You know our geography? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's just, yes, it's considered like Latin America. Okay. But we had Brazilians come too, so yeah, like a few Brazilian exchange students. And it really depends on what kind of work you do. Um, some work you see lots of, <laughs> some work you see people from very different uh, countries, every country you might imagine. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, I think that is the last question is medical is education in your country is in English? Yes, it has to be in English. Okay, thank you. Ah, Marielle said, now you know Peruvian people. <laughs> it was very lovely seeing you guys, yes. Yes, I think that that is all. There are no more, no more questions from the participant. So I want to thank you all. Uh, there's one last question. Someone is asking medical education in your country is in English. Yeah, it's in English. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, yes. Uh, maybe you, do you have question for, for us or? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Who's coming to Kurdistan now? <laughs> Yes, I think that, that that was the the objective of this presentation because we wanted to um, like um, it's like a marketing project because we want to promote your NMO like for an exchange and our our um, in in January is going to be the the second call for exchanges so I hope that someone. Uh, Upload for your country. Please do come. It's going to be amazing. And if you do come, come during uh, March, where, you know, it's the springtime and it's the best time ever. Uh, yeah, we're going to we're gonna be super excited. Okay. Thank you so much. And for your presentation, we were, we are very thankful and it was amazing. So, no, nothing more. Um, we are very thank you. <laughs> How about a group picture before we leave? Yes. Uh, chicos, pueden prender sus cámaras, por favor, para una pequeña foto para que se puedan llevar nuestros amigos.